Good afternoon, everyone. I hope uh, our lovely lunch isn't going to uh, put you all asleep, for my presentation at least. So my, <clears throat> my name is John Wood. I am a uh, technical diver, and uh, I, I specialize, if you like, in uh, creating 3D models of, of shipwrecks and sites underwater uh, as a volunteer for Heritage Malta and, uh, and University of Malta. And I'm going to be talking a little more in depth about the process of gathering the data and processing that data to create the 3D models that we create. So, um, as, as Maya explained quite clearly, the, the use of the 3D models that we create is, is applied very much to, to two aspects, if you like, two dimensions. Um, one is for public outreach purposes, um, as we have on the, on our left-hand side, the, the virtual museum. Uh, but more and more, we use uh, the, the data for technical documentation of, of sites, um, whether it's uh, a one-off study of, uh, of a newly discovered shipwreck to, to actually document what's been discovered, whether it's to monitor um, changes on the site, which could be due to various factors, uh, maybe environmental degradation, maybe damage from surface vessels, maybe vandalism and looting, which unfortunately happens from time to time, though, though since I think the management system has been put in place, uh, much less so. And also to document excavations. Um, uh, the, the teams I work with um, do regular excavations on sites uh, in order to, to, to understand further, especially on you know, prehistoric sites. Um, and uh, and photogrammetry is used extensively for that purpose. Now, there are two main methods of, of gathering the data. Um, we talked about human diving, which, uh, as Maya said, takes us up to a maximum of 120 meters. Um, and, and, and soon we'll be embarking on some tests using cameras and lights on our AUV. So I'm looking forward to that um, more dry experience in gathering data. And that should be quite an interesting journey. However, even just diving 200 meters plus isn't a trivial undertaking. It requires years of training. Uh, it requires a significant in investment individually in, in very sophisticated equipment. So, and that's just to reach 100 meters. We do more than that. We do, we do run projects, we run excavations, we do tasks, we do scans of objects, of, 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 of shipwrecks at those depths. So uh, the, it becomes even more challenging, and, uh, but obviously safety remains always a, a big priority for us, and I think in that respect we have an excellent track record. So, so yeah, the challenge is, um, I suppose, when compared to land-based um, 3D modeling or gathering of data for 3D models are, are, are many. So the safety issues I mentioned earlier, um, uh, but also, things like limited time available at the target depths. Um, the deeper the site is, the less time we have. I mean, if we're on land scanning this room, you could spend three days in it very comfortably doing each, each corner. When we're on the water, there are limitations in terms of how long we can sp spend on the water. If it's a deep shipwreck, then literally sometimes we limit it to minutes, 10 minutes, 12 minutes every dive. And then we have to go back the next day and again the next day in order to gather more and more data to, build, to, to gather the data we need to build the model. Uh, visibility is many times a challenge underwater. Um, as you can see from, from the right-hand side image, that's during actual excavation. But, uh, but even you know, with, with, with fish farms now, more and more fish farms, some wrecks uh, have become very, very difficult to dive on because of the visibility um, issues that we have. Therefore, the photographs you take aren't going to be very clear. Therefore, you have to dive closer to the wreck. And the closer you have to dive to the wreck, then the more data you need in order to get the data um, to make the model. So all these, all these uh, challenges. Uh, equipment is more specialized. So while we might be using the same cameras that, uh, that are used on land, they need to be housed in specialized housings, which, which um, can uh, survive at the depths we dive at. And also, um, it's very difficult to benefit from technology like global positioning. So there's no GPS signals underwater. So it's not like you have a drone here where you can track where the drone is and use that data to help in the 3D modeling. Underwater, it's a totally different situation. Uh, so to my next slide. Here we're going to see um, the same shipwreck that 
Maya talked about, the, the Kuyawak. This is a, uh, a ship, as she said, uh, sunk in 1942 during World War II. It lies at just above uh, 100 meters, 98, 97 meters is the seabed. Uh, and the length of this ship is 85 meters, so quite uh, a, big, a big ship. We, we scanned this in 2023 was. Uh, now, to, to create this model, it, you know, it's not perfect. It will never be perfect. We'd have to go again and again and again. But it kind of, we do enough until it's good enough, if you like. Um, this took 10 dives with teams of two people uh, each, each dive. Um, each dive was around three hours long, and in a couple of cases, significantly more. We gathered 14,000 images in order to create this 3D model. Um, so a, a three-hour dive actually only gives us between 20 and 25 minutes actual working time at the bottom. The rest is spent in decompression. So if you count that, if you count the, 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 the backup team who have to support the divers who are diving deep, gathering the data, you have to count the processing. Um, I, I, quick back of an envelope calculation gives me at least 30 man days to gather the data and process the data into this 3D model. Um, it's apart from the cost of the boat and the equipment and the gases, et cetera, et cetera. So it is quite an undertaking. And, and this is why the deeper the wrecks, the bigger the wrecks are, which need to be added to the museum, then you know, they just take the time they take. You know, there's no way we're going to be adding three or four a year, for example, because these are each one of these is a major project in its own right to do. So here we see maybe a bit more detail of the, of the model in the actual software. We use a software called uh, Agisoft Metashape to do this. Um, uh, each each uh, blue rectangle you see in the bottom image actually um, represents a photograph. And there we can see also on the left-hand side uh, a bit of detail of the, uh, of the hull um, uh, of the bow showing all the different photographs which constitute the, uh, that particular area of the model. So it gives you some idea of the, of the scale of things we need to work to. And uh, this is just one image from the set of the 14,000 images which we used to create this 3D model. And you can see the kind of quality, if you like, or lack of quality of the image. And that's probably quite a good image, actually, to work from. So, so it, it, it's, it's not an easy task, even when it comes to the processing side. So as we progressed our work from shallower depths to deeper and larger wrecks, uh, we needed to think a bit out of the box and work to improve the speed and quality of capture, always keeping in mind um, safety issues. So nowadays, to most of our work, we use cameras which are mounted on underwater scooters, which as you can see there in the, in the image that's on the actually tower wreck, which Rebecca will be talking about later. Um, so the scooter pulls a diver along the sea bottom. There's a camera mounted to the front with lights, and the camera's just taking photos, um, one every second or, or one every half a second, uh, and kind of imagine the, the, the um, land equivalent is like a drone flying above a site taking photographs. We've also, uh, a couple of years ago, started using uh, a system like you have in the top right-hand corner where we have camera, three cameras actually on a rig, and two of those are synchronized, taking photographs um, together in synchronization, um, what we call a stereo pair of cameras. And th that gives us the ability to create scaling of the model, to actually measure what we're, uh, what we're modeling without actually laying, needing to lay scale while also taking physical measurements from, from the site. And that's helped a great deal. Uh, help to speed up uh, data capture quite a lot because it saves the whole process of putting scale bars down on the site and picking them up after once, uh, once we're ready, assuming we want, obviously, to scale the, uh, the site. Um, uh, but photogrammetry is a lot more than, as I mentioned earlier, a lot more than pretty models. Um, in fact, the word photogrammetry means measuring through photographs. So. The, the concept of using a 3D model to make uh, measurements which mirror as far as possible the physical reality of the site is also very, very important. Um, in fact, uh, we've, we've, we've developed or, uh, a methodology where we use uh, photogrammetry also 
to document uh, excavations. And um, certainly this is a far more efficient uh, and accurate method of documenting excavations than more traditional methods using, um, uh, using scales and, and tapes, tape measures underwater and this kind of thing. So here we see an image from the Salini excavation. This is quite a shallow um, job. This is at around four to five meters off in Salini Bay. Uh, and, and this is a, a yearly undertaking by the University of Malta, and it's used to train students in, in underwater excavation techniques. And, and, I, and we use that process to, to mentor students and to teach students how to use photogrammetry to do this documentation. Here again, we're seeing uh, two images um, of the trench. This is actually from this year's project, which was closed today. Uh, today was the last day of, of, of this project. Uh, I don't know if any of you drive by Salini, you'd see a big white marquee and lots of people running around over there. That's actually the students running this, this project. Um, so that's the, that's the trench, which is excavated uh, down to a depth of around almost seven meters, from, so about a three meter deep trench, so quite, quite deep. Uh, and the blue uh, lines you see there are the photographs which, 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 we, which were used to make up that 3D model. And the outcomes we get from this work allow us to do many, many things. Um, we can measure, for example, there's a piece of timber there which was discovered on the seabed during the excavation where you can measure that virtually. You can create cross-sections of the trench as we see in the photo next to it. And, uh, and you can use daily models to compare progress and to, to document. So here we're seeing, for example, um, what we call a, a digital elevation model showing actual depths of the site and another one comparing um, one, day, one day with the previous day showing the areas of the site which have actually changed since the previous day. So it's a very, very powerful tool for, uh, for this technical, uh, technical documentation. We also uh, use the same methodology on deeper sites. Um, this is a totally different kettle of fish. This is uh, the Phoenician shipwreck of Schlendi and Gozo at 108 meters. And uh, there's a diver creating a, a daily photogrammetric model of, of the excavation area. Um, the limiting factor, as I mentioned earlier, with this kind of, of, uh, of dive is the time we have on site. So this, uh, each dive gives us just 12 minutes on site to create this 3D model, to gather the data to create the model. Uh, we've run four seasons of excavation on this site between 2018 and 2021, um, uh, and now that's, that's a project which is closed. So just to my last couple of slides to give you an example of the, of the um, outcomes of the photogrammetry on the Phoenician shipwreck now. This is the site, uh, it's 12 by five meters, and as you can see, there's a, a large number of amphora and grinding stones at both ends. And the excavation took place in a, in a small area um, towards the, the, this side of the, um, of the wreck. Um, uh, so this is prior to any disturbance, and this is how we left the site um, in 2021. So you can see the, that section which has been excavated totally. But allowing us to take four years of photogrammetric data and overlaying gives us the ability to visualize the site like this, for example. So this is effectively a heat map of the changes to the site. Uh, anything blue hasn't been touched. But there you can see clearly on the right-hand side a scale showing the color changes which relate directly to the, um, to the depths or the, the amount of changes that took place on, uh, on the site. Uh, so that's, uh, that's me. Thank you very much. I hope that's been interesting. And uh, I'd welcome any questions afterwards. Thank you.